Ooh, ah. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. This is Terry Lewis, and you're listening to Sonic Prospectives. Welcome to another interview of Sonic Perspectives. I'm Rodrigo, and my guest today is Terry Illos from Land of Gypsies. Terry, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rodrigo. How are you? Very good. I mean, we're having technical difficulties here, so people can't see me on the screen, but, you know, the main thing is that you're visible to us, so that's great. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, we're here, of course, to promote your new band and the new album, the self-titled Land of Gypsies. Uh, it came out on December 10th, right? Yes. Yeah, what kind of response have you had to it so far? Um, I, I want to be modest, but it's yeah. pretty overwhelming. I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised. I didn't expect such a great response. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful and grateful. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really didn't know what to expect. I, uh, when we did the album, uh, you know, we, we, we did it uh, from the bottom of our hearts. We didn't try to, to sound like anybody else. Or we didn't try to... Do, do the album to please the label or please the record companies or the same thing or please uh, the media i just said i want to do an album that's that represents who i am and that's it and uh <laughs> here we are today i mean so many interviews so one after the other and I'm, i'm very excited and very grateful that's good to hear and uh and i know the band was previously called the uh, gang of souls right uh, what motivated the change in the name there was another band call a uh, gang of souls and uh, they sent me a nice message and they said okay uh, i know who you are blah 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 would you mind uh changing the name we, we we've been thinking about using that name for a while and blah blah and i said yeah no problem the name is a name you know so i had no problem changing the name okay uh, it's still a great name so <laughs> and uh, how did you and the rest of the band split the writing and uh, what came first is it the lyrics or the songs how did that go I think uh, out of um, out of eleven songs or twelve songs, uh, eight were written by my. I think eight or seven, if I'm not mistaken, were written by myself and uh, for the music and melody, mm. and uh, for the lyrics by J.K. Northrop, who's a friend of mine for a long, you know, a long time friend of mine, and the other three or four songs, if I'm not mistaken, please forgive me, Sergey, if I made a mistake, <laughs> were, were written by uh, Sergey, myself, uh, for the music and melody and, uh, and um, lyrics for J.K. Northrop. Okay. Uh, is it difficult for you to sing like lyrics from, uh, lyrics that you, that you didn't create? Uh, is it different or difficult for you or not really? No, not, not that, well, not at all. I, I work with, uh, no, because I do a lot of voiceover. So when I do voiceover, they give me a, a lyric sheet and I have to adjust to that really fast. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, when I work with an artist who's going to be my lyricist, um, I choose carefully my words and uh, I work, you know, usually the same friends like Pat um, mm -hmm. or from XYZ or Jake and Northrop, you know. I, I, I'm a songwriter. I write music and melodies. And usually the title of a song, um, and and your line, and I, I I do write, you know, lots of lyrics as well. But I write lines, one line here, left and right, and now like a, I would send, a, I would write a bunch of lines that I send them to my to 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 J.K. Or, or Pat, and I said this is what I'm going to talk about, and these are some of the words I want to use, and blah blah blah, and 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 uh, J.K., who's a brilliant lyricist um, and songwriter as well, usually said, all right, I see what you want to say, and. And here we are, you know. Right, right. And I was surprised at uh, how upbeat the album is, especially at a time when everyone's so scared and depressed with this COVID thing. Uh, was that intentional or did it come naturally when you were writing? Not, not it really came naturally. We, um, we, um, we were in studio, Fabrizio and I, most of the time. Uh, the guys were uh, either in Nashville or in Europe. Oh, Fabri oh, 
Eric was Eric uh, Ragnar was in Los Angeles, but mm. most of the time um, Fabrizio and I were together and we were mostly talking about food and soccer, who's the best <laughs> soccer team in the world, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> The French or the Italians, who knows? It's well, the Brazilians, talking, of course. <laughs> yeah, the Brazilian, yeah, we're talking, yeah, the Brazilian, we think the Brazilians have the best players in the world, but they don't have the best team because they usually play for themselves. Each player wants to do uh, a Pele, you know, each player yeah. wants to be uh, the best in the world, which doesn't always work like that. I think, uh, for example, the Germans, they don't necessarily have the best players in the world, although they have great players but they have an incredible defense, an incredible huh. team. And that's why they usually end up in the finals or semifinal. Um, the Brazilians have probably the best players in the world with the Argentinians. Uh, but- um, Yeah, collectively it doesn't work, right? <laughs> yes, it doesn't work, collectively it doesn't work. They just, each one of them wants to be the, the next guy. It doesn't work like that. You have to be a team player. It's like being in a band. Um, I mean, you're a good singer. That's great, uh, but you can't. The band cannot rely just on the singer. It has. You have to have a great singer, a great drummer, and a guitar player, keyboard player, all that stuff. But also great songs. So it's a team effort. Exactly. So, yeah. So we, yeah. we talked. We talked a lot about that, and we agree. I mean, we agree the, uh, on everything. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know. Uh, although he believes the Italian team is the best, but. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I, I really like the first video, Shattered, uh, where I think you play yourself signing a record deal, right? Uh, I wonder if that was inspired by, rec by actual events or not. It was a, in, inspired by events, but not a record deal. It was hired by, it was inspired by an event that happened uh, three years ago uh, in my career, in my mm. music career, but it has nothing to do with the, uh, the record deal. We, did, we didn't want to talk we didn't want to tell the truth as far as what had really happened. We, just, we wanted to be positive, mm -hmm. but it was about an event that happened to me three years ago. Yes. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. And uh, I, I like the lyrics and the, the positive outcome of the lyrics, you know, overcoming yeah. difficulties and so on. That's great. Yeah. Great. I, I talked to Jeff about that, Jackie about that. And uh, I, I wanted to be positive and, and he agreed with me. He, he's like me, a very positive person. And he, he said, well, I've been shattered in my life so many times, but I'm back and I'm, I'm stronger than you. And, and I am stronger uh, uh, than ever before. So, you know, uh, it was a very positive message. There was no negativity about it. Like it was just what it was all about. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, talked, I expressed my feelings through um, his words, actually, or vice versa. You know, we, we worked together on that. And... Uh, we, we came up with those uh, those lines. He came up with those lines. Mm -hmm. I really admire your attitude and the way you handle that case, man. So props to you for that. Thank you. It's always to be, you know, nobody wants to to, to see the dirty laundry. You know, you don't have to be. Uh, Some people uh, do, but. <laughs> yeah, not me. Uh, yeah. I, Rodrigo, I moved on. I'm a very happy person. Um, mm -hmm. I wish nothing bad to anyone. I just say, uh, if I don't, if I don't like someone, I just walk away from the person. And if they, it's what it is. And in the end, what I notice is they do a lot of damage to themselves. So whatever, I, we all have an opportunity to do other things in life. And, and, and um, you have to seize the opportunity and, and not, and look at the positive things. There's always something positive in, in the new action. For example, if someone closed the door uh, to your face, there's a reason for that. And um, look into that and see what you can do to to open a new door, a new window, you know, uh, instead of dwelling in the dark and, and always saying, why me, why me, poor me, poor me. Yeah, it's easy to do that. Of course, we all do that for a minute, but me, I do that for a minute and a half, a minute, like everybody else. And then I'm sorry. I, and then I say to myself, no way, dude, you're not going to push me down. I'm, 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 I'm a fighter. I'm a, I'm a martial artist, you know, like every martial artist. I, I've been down many times. I've been, you know, I've been slammed many times when I do judo or jujitsu. Yeah. You know, I've been I've been slammed so many times, but I've always found the the energy to say, okay, let's do it again. You know, even right. though I'm, I'm all beat up and I don't look as good anymore, let's let's do it again. And mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. You, you have to find you have to find the good in, in in any kind of situation. You know, so if you can, of course, absolutely. Yeah. 
course. Yeah, yeah. And uh, back to Land of Gypsies, uh, the second video which will come out, I think, in mid-January is for the song Rescue Me, which yes. is another highlight of the album. I, I know you're proud of the result of the video, right? And I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I was able to, to work with a great, uh, um, a great team, a great um, uh, Italian team um, connected to Frontiers and, and my friend Enzo is producing the, the video and very excited about the, the video. It's coming, I don't have the complete result yet, but we shot the video in Los Angeles last Sunday. It's really, really uh, interesting. Um, those guys are very artsy, so I'm looking forward to mm. see the results. The, the song Rescue Me means a lot to me because um, it's the eternal search for, for happiness, the eternal search for, for love. I always believe that some of us um, are lucky to, to find the, the soulmate, and some of us uh, keep, are still searching. So um, I, uh, I wanted to write a song about that, pretty, pretty honest and sincere, and um, you know, there was you know, express my feelings, you know, how mm -hmm. I feel, how I see things, you know, in my, at this point in my life. Right. I can def definitely tell that you pour your heart into those songs. And, uh, and what's great about the album is that uh, we know exactly what we're going to get as soon as the songs kick in. It's straight up rock and roll, just like the other bands you work with, right? It is, but it's a little bit more, um, I would say it's a little bit more um, 70s in a way. Mm -hmm. it's not overproduced um really a lot has to do with our visions um uh, the band's vision and 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 fabrizio who was in command as uh, uh, as far as production and um uh he was really he really understood the uh the the fact that i, I wanted to 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 be um organic do you know what i mean really mm -hmm. organic and, and not overproduced with lots of big backup vocals and 25 guitars and everything. Yeah. So, no, no, I want to sound like the 70s, like like Humble Pie and, and early White Snake and, and, and that vein. And I said, this is what I want, uh, you know, bad company, you know. And I said, okay. So we, we went for that and uh, we hired the great guitarist, uh, Serge. Um, it's fantastic. He really understood the 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 the, the, the vibe and, and Eric. Same thing. Eric is just a great uh, piano player, mm -hmm. yeah, keyboard player. You know. Yeah, my favorite song is actually "Long Summer Day," which is you know towards the end of the album. And I think it's you know it's not riff driven or vocal driven. It's almost like feel driven. To me, it sounds like you deliberately set out to do an upbeat song like that at that place in the album. Am I right in, in assuming that or not? It's interesting you're saying that because I gotta be honest with you, it's, it's everybody's favorite song. You know, <laughs> uh, I've done interviews so far. I've done I think 14 interviews or 12, oh, and wow. everybody, everybody, everybody mentions that. So oh, this is my favorite song on the album. It's funny because it's the one I didn't think of. I'm like, I, I wrote that song 10 years ago mm. for an, an artist uh, as a songwriter. I, 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 you know, I write songs for people and 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 either film or TV or, or, or whatever. And um, I wrote that song for an artist and uh, I gave it to him to use. I lent it because I kept the publishing, of course. Mm -hmm. And I, I, um, I said, you can use the song if you want. But for some reasons, he, the deal didn't go through. Um, it didn't happen. So I said, all right. And um, when I had the melody and the music and everything, I've had that recording in my, my phone for like 10 years. I wrote, I wrote it about 10 years ago. Um, and then when I played it to um, to Fabrizio, and he said, "Oh, I love it." And I sent the uh, the melody to J.K., who said, "Oh, Long Summer Day would be a great title for the song." He came up with the lyrics for that song. I had the melody and and the uh, the uh, the music that he came up with the uh, with the uh, lyrics uh, for for the song. So you know, it's very very. I'm glad you like it. You know, I need to listen to it again because like everybody everybody likes that song. So I need to. Like, let me listen to it again. <laughs> yeah, go and do it, man. It's it's one of the greatest ones uh, of the album, sure. for sure. Yeah. Sure. And uh, your voice is still intact after all those years of singing. Uh, you mentioned martial arts, and I guess, you know, being fit has, has something to do with it. Uh, what kind of care do you have to take nowadays to preserve your voice? Well, I, uh, uh, Rodrigo, I don't drink. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not a drinker, so I... Uh, mm -hmm. I have a glass of wine once in a while, that's about it. 
I don't drink, I don't smoke, I, I work out, I go to the gym. Um, I try to eat a pretty healthy life, but you know, I mean, I don't do, uh, I don't do uh, um, junk food. I don't go to McDonald's or anything like it. Um, mm. And uh, and maybe it's in my DNA. I don't know. I have no idea. You know, um, uh, I, I drink a lot of water, and mm -hmm. water is important. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's probably my my DNA. That's all. <laughs> yeah. That's all, you know? Yeah. And in terms of developing your style and like finding your voice, uh, what were your main influences when you began? And when was the moment you realized you know you could sing and be a frontman? Because these are two different things, right? Yes, good question. <laughs> um, well, um, as for our singers, there's so many great singers in this world, and you have to respect them. Um, every genre of music has its own uh, great singer. Uh, if, if you listen to rock, for, as far as uh, for myself, uh, rock music, uh, I would say um, when it comes to rock, I like I like Lou Graham, I like um, Paul Rogers, I like David Coverdale, I like um, Joe Cocker, um, all those type of singers. Uh, they're a little bit more blues oriented, but not completely blues, but you mm -hmm. know, you know. Um, when it comes to other music, you know, if it comes to um to classical music, I like Pavarotti, you know, the greatest Pavarotti, who's one of the greatest singer of all time. Uh he's a classical singer. Um I think you can't, it's impossible to say there's one greatest singer of all, it doesn't exist. Um each style has its own greatest singer in a way. You know what I mean? If you yeah. listen to if you listen to Brazilian music, you know, you 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 you're gonna think uh um uh, what's the name of that uh, um famous Brazilian singer uh, so many Sergio uh, Mendes Sergio uh, Mendes of course yeah. you you're gonna think that Sergio Mendes is the greatest yeah. yeah it could be if you listen to um uh flamenco music you're gonna say oh my god Cameron is the best singer in the world yeah be for that type of music so if you listen to to pop music nowadays you're gonna say a pop r and you're going to say Whitney Houston, of course, I'm going to say, yeah, Whitney was the best. But there's no such thing as the best. It's just, you know, who we like and, and you know, you know, there's the style that we like and we, we listen to the, the culture, the, you know, all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned Frontiers, which, you know, commissioned you to do this album. And I know Serafino has done an amazing job at giving platform to bands of the same era as, as uh, XYZ. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the importance of this label for music of this kind. I think, I think honestly, um, I've, I sent them a nice message the other day. I, I told them, thank you so much for, for carrying on the flag uh, of the 80s music, because the truth is everybody turned their, turned their backs on, on 80s music. Uh, yeah. Everybody, everybody yeah. on the labels don't want to have anything to do with it. They use them like a, an old pair of shoes. And then when it was over, the labels get rid of all the bands, all the bands get dropped. I get dropped, Poison, you know, um, Motley Crue, everyone get dropped. Although we made those bands millions of dollars. Once they used us all, we yeah. were gone. Uh, you have to give credit to Frontiers for loving the, the genre of music and continuing signing bands. And, and um, you know, this label is really important for, for that style of music. It's the only one, I think, or one of the only one that really does something. And, you know, uh, sometimes people criticize them for this or that. You know, I don't want to get into the polemics, but, but all I can say is this, is they, um, they are there when you need them and, uh, and then we have to thank them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, I've discussed this with my editor uh, a lot of times. Serafino is a guy I would like to interview and, you know, have a lengthy conversation with him because he keeps he keeps this type of music alive, you know, for fans well, like he, me. So he loves the style. He's genuinely loves the style. He's not bullshitting you. He's not doing it just for the money. Yeah. You know, he's a, I, he's really, he really loves the music, you know, and that's what it's all about. You know, people realize people don't realize that. Music is, is a feeling, music is a passion. And if, when you lose that passion, you should move on. You should do something else. Um, I don't do music to just for the money. Of course, I get paid. I go on the road. I get paid. I do albums. I get paid. But it's not that. If I can make money uh, doing other things. And, and once the feeling is gone, trust me, I'll do something else. I will not 
continue doing albums and 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 just because I want to collect uh, a few dollars. No freaking way, dude. Um, <laughs> I do other things. I can, I can, there's so many things I want to do in life and, and I, has, I haven't achieved yet. And no way. Once the passion is gone, it's like a marriage. Once the passion <laughs> is gone, you have to move on. You have to move on and, 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 and bow and say, thank you so much. It was great. I had a great time. And it's like some artists. I mean, I, I hear some artists and I'm not going to name anyone, but they, they're not what they used to be. They don't sound the way they used to sound like. And I'm like, okay, well, unless you really need the money, I mean, why are you doing it? You, you freaking suck, you know? <laughs> I mean, you suck. You, you 70 pounds overweight. You look like shit, you know? Yeah. Um, you, you suck. And you're actually making a mockery of, 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 of yourself. And by doing what you're doing, you're insulting the fans. You're insulting your, your legacy. But that's yeah. me talking. And, and first of all, I would not, by the way, name anyone. I would just say, this is what do I feel. Unless they need the money, then, okay, I understand. You know, he makes some money. I get, I get it. Other than that, I would give up. I would do other things. I would, uh, I would move to Costa Rica and get myself a little um, bungalow somewhere by the beach and uh, open myself a little, uh, a little uh, bar, you know, uh, <laughs> like a... Uh, what do you call that? Uh, like a, a panini kind of place with sandwiches and, and ice yeah. cream and everything. I would do that. I'd love, I'd love to do that. Actually, it's a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of fun. And yeah. um, once the passion is over, it's like a marriage. I'm gone. Have, have a nice day. Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah. And uh, in parallel with that, you're still doing shows with XYZ from time to time. Uh, is there any intention of releasing new material at some point or not really? You mean doing XYZ and... Um, you mean, I couldn't, can you repeat your, your question, please? Uh, in parallel with Land of Gypsies, you, you still do shows with XYZ from time to time. Uh, is there any intention of making XYZ like more stable and having new material being released and whatnot? Or? Um, we have new songs ready to go. We have an album ready to go, actually. Uh, oh, okay. We, we, haven't, we wrote an album, uh, Pat and I, but um, we, we, we don't, we're not exactly sure when we're going to be releasing it. Uh, I got so many... Uh, songs ready to go so many i've recorded and mixed and mastered so many songs over the last year that they're still in my hard drive so i really don't know when xy is going to come out uh actually should have came out three years ago when i started doing the songs mm. and three years later the songs are finished and they're still in my hard drive and i haven't done anything with them so i don't know i'm not sure i it's just a matter of timing. So we'll see. We, we have shows. We have shop coming up. We have some, some big festivals. But we're not, um, you know, uh, we, 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 we will do, we, 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 will, <laughs> we will really some XYZ stuff, but uh, uh, it's a matter of timing right now. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. And I'm curious about the decision you made uh, to move from France to the US uh, when XYZ was taking off. How was it for you? I mean, did you have any struggles in the beginning or was it easy to move? No, was, I ha the reason I was signed to RCA Records when I was 17 and a half, I got a record deal. Uh, and then the, uh, the, the, album, the, the single was supposed to come uh, at a certain time. And two weeks before the uh, launching the, uh, the, 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 the release of the, uh, the single, they contacted me and said, we're gonna cancel the project. We don't want to work with you. We don't think uh, uh, France is ready for rock and blah, blah, blah. So I was pretty upset about it. And um, I took some time off and then um, I worked in the postal service. I was a postman for a little while. And then uh, one day I said, you know what, screw you guys. So I uh, bought a ticket, a one-way ticket. And I was in Los Angeles a few weeks later. And yes, it was difficult at first, it was very, very difficult because I didn't speak English um, and um, nobody, was, nobody was interested in signing someone who didn't speak the language and, you know, I didn't have the culture and everything. So it was difficult. But eventually, um, you know, as I said, I'm a survivor. So here I am. Yeah, uh, it must have been difficult. Uh, I mean, I'm surprised you stay so well grounded since then because there must have been lots of temptations back then, no? in terms of like lots of drugs and girls everywhere or? I've never been into drugs because I've did martial arts ever since I was 12. My passion is beside you. 
you know, mm-hmm. besides music is martial arts. I, I had the chance of working with some of the, oh my God, some, some amazing teachers from all over the world, from, from, from Brazilian teachers to Japanese, lots of Japanese, some Chinese, you know, Thai. So I had the chance of working with so many great teachers that all those guys were pretty much sober. And um, it was my sanity because I needed to, to, to be around. So, I mean, to be surrounded by normal people, normal Joe Schmo that just loved the sport, you know, just have a regular job and everything. So that kept me, kept me grounded and uh, drug was not my thing, you know, uh, you know, plus I'm too vain that you don't want to look old. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> awesome. Um, and another thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, your voiceover work. I know you've done the Rugrats. Uh, what else have you worked on? I've worked on a lot of things, a lot of commercials uh, for, for Pepsi, for um, uh, uh, Dr. Pepper, uh, singing animation. I've done a lot of things. I've never mm. had a big, big break yet of one major um Like a Disney I, movie or... Yeah. I never had that yet. I didn't have the main <laughs> character, but I have little voices left and right, and that kept me going financially because mm-hmm. it paid very well, and it's a lot of fun. So, but I'm still waiting for the big break, which may happen. Um, a big character would be great. I was, I was up for years ago for... Um, years ago, I was up for the character for Cats and Boots. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get it, obviously. Uh, I was, uh, uh, who got it? Uh, uh, oh, my God. Oh, um, my God. Antonio, uh, Antonio Banderas. Banderas, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. got the job. But I was up for that, you know. Uh, and I got the job. I, I was up for many, many big jobs. Last minute, they decided to go with a um, well-known uh, uh, um, actor instead mm-hmm. of me. But uh, I was up for many jobs. But eventually, maybe one day, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to, uh, to, uh, to get one. Who knows? Yeah. And uh, I listened to your solo album, Gypsy Dreams, uh, with... Uh, uh-huh. Flamenco covers of classic rock uh-huh, songs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I love what you did with Heaven and Hell from Black Sabbath, for example, which was, for me, was totally unexpected. Uh, can, can we expect more on the, in that vein or not? Yes. Um, Luis Villegas and, and myself and Jose Garcia, we've been talking about that. Uh, we just added a, a, new, a new drummer. Um, and uh, we are definitely working on a new album. It will... Sometimes the next year I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, working on that. Sometime in, in, in 2022, I'll be um, going to the studio and, 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 and work on that, definitely. Oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, last one for me. Uh, I know that the prospect, prospect of like a full tour is wishful thinking at this stage, but uh, right. what do you have planned for Land of Gypsies, for XYZ, for other stuff, solo stuff that you have? Well, I, I do, I do. I do a lot of dates with, um, with, uh, 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 what do you call the XYZ? I have some festivals, big festivals coming up this year, but also I didn't expect to tour with, um, I mean, I didn't think about touring with uh, Land of Gypsies at all, um, mm. but we're getting such a great response that um, I think I may have to either incorporate those songs <laughs> in my, uh, in my solo things, or I may have just to do shows with the band, you know, which actually is fine because I'm looking, those guys are wonderful musicians and it's very possible that we, we, we may be doing some dates, you know, who knows, maybe go, I'd love to go to Brazil, to be honest with you. There you I've go. Never, I've never been to Brazil. I've never had the chance to go to Brazil. So I'd love to go there and do some shows. I know my friend, uh, Jeff Scott Solo does a lot of shows over there and everything. Yeah. His whole band is, is made of Brazilian musicians, so he goes yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the I don't have the connections in Brazil. I don't have the uh, um, how can I say I don't have a connection with a promoter over there. So uh, mm. uh, if that happened, I'd love to do uh, stuff in Brazil. I'm I'm a big fan of, of of the culture and and the scene. So I'd love to go there. Fingers crossed that it will happen, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, Terry, thank you so much. We're talking now in like mid-December and this interview is only going to be published in January but I uh, wanted to wish you Merry Christmas and a very productive 2022. Thank you very much Rodrigo. You take care of yourself and your family okay? All Thank the you. best man. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.